Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to revisit the topic of curve endpoints. In Blender 3.0, the curve endpoint node got removed and replaced with something new. So we're going to take a look at making geometry node pipes while placing flanges on their endpoints. And along the way, check out some more vector math so that they can be aligned properly. Let's get into it. So to start off with, we're using Blender 3.0. So if you're sticking to just the release versions of Blender, everything we're doing in this video, you can do in the release version of Blender 3.0. One of the questions I've been getting recently is what happened to the Curve Endpoints node? This was available before fields were added to geometry nodes. Since we're going to be creating these pipes with curves, let's go ahead, clear out everything, and add a curve to work with. I'm going to go to my Geometry Nodes tab and add a Bezier curve. This will be fine to start with. I'll add a geometry node tree. We'll solidify this curve by adding a curve to mesh node. For the profile curve, we'll just use a simple curve primitive circle. And we'll bring the radius down to something a little more usable. Let's say four inches. Now the idea is that we want to add some flanges to the ends of these pipes so that we could create multiple splines and have them automatically have flanges on the ends of each pipe. First off, let's create the flange we're going to work with. To make sure everything fits together nicely, I'm going to base my flange off of this curve. So the first thing I'm going to do is flatten this out and zoom in on one of the ends. I'm going to do some simple mesh modeling to create my flange. I'll right click on this flange and hit Shade Smooth. And then under my Object Data Properties, Go to Normals and choose Auto Smooth. That'll be good for now. One of the things we'll need to pay attention to is where the pivot point of our flange is. Now that I've got the size about right, now that I've got the size about right, I'm going to rotate my flange around its pivot point so that it's easier to work with. I'm going to go into Edit Mode, select all my vertices, rotate it 90 degrees, go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry. Because this is completely round and even, it puts it at the very center. And now I have to decide how far up and down this is going to be compared to my origin. The origin is going to be placed at the end of our curve. So if I want my flange to extend beyond the end of my curve, I would have it up here. If I want the end of my flange to be even with the end of my curve, I would put it down here. But for now, I'm going to place it right about here. And note, that my flange is oriented on the Z axis. So my Z is up and down here. This is going to be really important to line this up with the pipes later. If you've rotated this object at all outside of edit mode, this could cause problems. So we're going to want to also apply rotation. To do that, we'll press Control A and say rotation. Now this object is truly aligned with the Z axis. For now, I'm going to hide this object. Going back to our pipe, we need to determine the endpoints. Previously, before fields, the curve endpoints node gave you locations of the endpoints of the curve. This was fine to a point, but it had its limitations. Now with fields, we can do this a whole lot more procedurally and get a lot more interesting effects. The thought process is that we're going to instance the flanges on the ends of the pipe. So I'll add an instance on points node. The points I want to instance are coming from my original Bezier curve. So I'm going to bring them from the group input into the points of my instance on points. I'll then add a join geometry node so that both my instance points and my curve to mesh are getting to my group output. What we want to do is instance the flange on the points of the curve. Coming over to my outliner, I'm going to rename these real quick and I'll drag the flange into my pipe's geometry node tree. I'll connect it up as the instance geometry. If you see a problem like this, it means that your flange object didn't have its scale applied. I'm going to go back to my flange object really quick, press Control A, and also apply scale. There, that's better. Now you see we've got a flange at both ends of our curve. Of course, they're not pointed in the right directions, but at least it's a start. Also, what happens if I add points to my curve? I'm going to go ahead, select both ends, right click, and subdivide. Well now, we've got four flanges, and this really isn't what we're looking for. 
This is where the replacement of the curve endpoints node comes in. We're going to use the curve endpoint selection node. This is a node that I coded for Blender 3.0. It's a field input node, so when you connect it into your node tree, it's going to get its information from the most recently added geometry. I'm going to use it to select which points to instance, so I'll drag this to selection. In the instance on points node, the geometry that any of the field inputs relate to is this points input. So the endpoint selection is looking to the input geometry for what it's selecting with. So each point of our curve will be marked true or false. From the start size, that many points on the start end of the curve will be marked true. And from the end size, that amount of points from the end inward will be marked true. Any other points will be marked as false. So if you want to select the first two points and none of the last points, you could do this or vice versa or both. In this case, we just want one start point and one end point. So now let's look at how to rotate these into position. The first thing you might want to try is using the instance on points rotation to change the rotation of these flanges. Maybe something like this. And while that works for a straight pipe like this, all we're doing is rotating them 90 degrees on the Y axis. But what happens when I rotate it? So this just statically points it in one direction. That's not going to work for us. What we really want to do is align the Z axis of our flange with this control point. However, control point rotation is not one of our inputs. But with a little vector math, we can derive it. Let's see what that would look like. We're going to talk about this in two dimensions, but the math also applies in three dimensions. Currently, the origin is over here. So this is zero, zero. The position of our control point is here, which is about at negative 10.5.5. The actual location really doesn't matter so much. We want to know what direction this is pointing. So we do have a little bit of information about this, namely this control handle. This control handle is around negative 14.5, 3.5. How can we use this information to our benefit? One of the nodes we have is an align to vector node. So if we can know the direction of a vector, we can align an object to it. So how do we find the direction of this vector? Well, right now, these two points represent vectors from the origin, namely this vector and this vector. Neither of those do us a whole lot of good. But if we subtract one of them from the other, we can get something more useful. So if I subtract this vector from this vector, I get a new vector of negative 4, 3, which is right about here. And if I draw a line from my origin to this point, you'll notice that it's parallel with this line. That means we can use this new vector as our direction. So let's jump over to our node tree and see how that looks. The two pieces of information we needed were the location of our control point and the location of our handle. We have both of those as field inputs. The location of our control point is the position field input. And the location of our handle is the curve, curve handle position. So the next thing we did was subtract the position of the control point from the position of the handle. To do that, I'll use a vector math node, set it to subtract, and since this is the start of my curve, this is the left handle. So I'm going to take the left handle minus the position. And now we have this vector. And I'm going to plug that into the rotation. This isn't right quite yet, but we'll get there. Why this isn't aligned yet is that this is a vector, not a rotation. So I need to change this vector into a rotation. To do that, I'll use a utility align Euler to vector. An Euler is a type of rotation. It's still not quite right, so let's see how to fix it. The first thing is, when you drop an align Euler to vector on a vector line, it connects the vector to the rotation socket, because that's the first available purple socket. That's not what we want. We want this to connect to the vector socket. Already we see that this has gotten closer because now it's completely perpendicular to the pipe instead of at an odd angle. The next thing we need to set is the alignment choice. That's these three options here at the top. This is which axis of our object we want to align with this vector. Now, you'll remember that we left our flange aligned to the Z axis. 
So the z-axis is running through the center of our flange. So we want to choose aligning the z-axis with our vector. And now our flange is aligned correctly. If I rotate my pipe now, my flange will follow along nicely. One thing you will want to look out for, and this is just an art direction issue, is to make sure the, the back handle of this endpoint is out a ways. So that way when you rotate it, it gives a little bit of space along the edge so your pipe doesn't pinch against the side of your flange because that won't look as good. Unfortunately, this isn't the end because let's go look at the other end of this pipe. Here we see our flange is on backwards. That's because we subtracted the position from the left curve handle to get our vector. If we take a look at this curve handle, we see that the left curve handle is down here, not up here. So we need to align this to the right curve handle. Of course, if we just switch this, this one will be correct and this one won't be. So let's see how to separate these. How we're gonna solve this is we're actually going to have two separate instance on points node, one for the beginnings of pipes and one for the ends. This instance on point node is good for instancing pipe starts. So let's go to our endpoint selection node and get rid of the end of the curve as being selected. So now this bit of our node group is only instancing the start flange. And select all of these nodes, our endpoint selection, our instance on points, and our alignment nodes. And I'm gonna press Control G to group them. I'll press Tab again to go back to my original tree. Coming to this node, I'll name it Flange Starts. So Flange Starts takes the, all of the points of the original curve, it takes the object we want to instance, and then outputs those instances. We'll go ahead and duplicate this node and connect it up to the same inputs. We'll also add it to the join geometry. Of course, immediately we don't see any change. What we've actually done is added an additional flange to the start. Before we edit this one, there's something to note. Because this is a group node, when we duplicated it, we created a linked copy. You'll see that the number of users of that data block is two. So if I change one, it's gonna change the other one as well. We don't want that to happen. So instead, I'm gonna click the two here and that's gonna create a single user. So now this one is flange starts and this one is flange starts 001 and there's no user number next to it. That means these are separated and I can change this one without affecting my original. The first thing I'll do is rename it to flange ends. Next, I'll tab into it. There's two small changes we need to make to this group. The first is we need to select the ends of the pipe instead of the beginnings. And then we need to change which curve handle we're selecting to create our vector. And then we'll tab out. So now the flanges on the ends of the pipe will align properly, no matter if they're a start or an end. Because the endpoint selection node works for every spline in a curve, I can duplicate this spline and its endpoints will also work correctly and get something decent looking. Of course, if you prefer straight pipes, you could always put your pipes into vector mode. You will notice if you do this, you'll get some kinking in the corners. That's just because of the way the geometry works coming into the ends when you don't have enough control points. One way to get around this is to resample your curve. So if I add a curve resample curve node to this point and then crank up the resampling, you'll see that the edges start to look a little better. Now granted, you will still get some pinching in the corners if you use this method, but that's okay. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and got you more familiar with both the endpoint selection and the align to vector nodes. And most of all, I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. Thanks for watching the channel. If you enjoyed the video, hit like and consider subscribing. So until next time, I'll catch you later.